on the profit now. You're on the profit now by Jack Sanderellia. Jack, Jack Sanderellia. Belly, on the profit now. You're on the profit now. Profit Jack Sanderellia. Belly, T the T-Force, now we going hard, cause we bumping at the beat source. It's a three-course dinner of dudes, bringing in news and stats, interviews and cast from the pro scene. So fresh and so clean, like you're leaning with, now me in the bot lane. Keep it hot like brand, practicing his dot game, give it to you easy like you're Resi in a bot game. Imagine Draven at prime time, now ulti like LeBlanc can copy that four times, but manlier, knock it up like now fight planning a family -er. You gotta be tuned in like Sona on the ad wall, get on the chat call, can a podcast really be all that? Of course, how do four guys pick a try for Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell, and I am your host for this evening. The same spiel every week for episode number 202. I am joined by all five people this week. Daze is with us. Hi. Hi, Daze. The Claude. Howdy. Chira. Hi. And Dom. You're not joined by five people. You're joined by four people. <laughs> I am joined Learn by the myself. Math. <laughs> he's been doing this for 200 episodes now. He's never going to get it right. Nope. Hey, at least I try, okay? At least I try. I'm just going to do this the entire night because I'm like due for air cut <laughs> so bad that I keep playing with it. It's, it's, it's you need to go for the full on Pompadour. No, I'm trying. Pretty long. <laughs> Pompadour. Well, if you look at it, the people who's not watching live can't see it. Like, this is really long on this side. But if we go over here, it doesn't really work. So, anyway, if sorry if you're listening to the MP3. But this is why you should watch live. So you can see my crazy hair. And you can see Dobbs shit eating grin the entire time. Especially when I'm mouthing the not, shit that you're saying with a stupid face. shit that this grin eats. There's a lot of things. It was a Snickers ice cream bar a minute ago. Well, if you guys want to help us eat, you guys can donate to the podcast, tforce.trinityforcepodcast.com. There is a donation button on the right-hand side. Thank you. I'll uh, give you that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that good one. Good transition. Alexander Vogel. Sorry if you didn't want your name put out there, but that's what I read first. Donated $10 <laughs> to us. Hey, guys, thanks for entertaining me every week on the way to work. I really enjoy the show and want to give you a little bit back. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you very much, Alexander. Awesome. Thank you. And again, we'll take if you, it. If you Thank would like you. to donate. And apologize. we apologize for uh, for yelling your, your name out on the internet. Your anonymity there. You are now on on the internet. Everybody knows. Uh, he's he's from a foreign land. At least I won't say what land he's from. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not American and he's still donated. So if you want to donate, tforce.turnedforcepodcast.com. Right hand side, there is a donation button. Below, twitch.tv forward slash tforcepodcast, there's also a donation button. Click it. Send your money. We're, it's like we're at the end of the year. We are going to keep this podcast going without you. But if you want to help us give back a little bit, send your money our way. We will happily take it from you. Uh, other than that, go check out Audible, tr the, our Audible trial and our NatureBox trial. They're both tiny URL, tforce nature, and tiny URL, tforce audible. And you guys can support the podcast one of two ways. You guys have all heard about that in the past. We're not going to really go over it too much. Um, other than that, one last announcement for this week is Elevator Brewing Company. This is the last time I'm going to talk about it on Saturday, the 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Show up. We want 25 to 1,000 people to show up, preferably 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere in between. Them. That's... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, show up, you know, come hang out. We're going to have a couple drinks. And if we have too many people that do show up, we'll just start uh, bar hopping. We'll just grab a big group of people and walk down the campus. It's really no different than the other day at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll figure it out from there. That is that. Is that. Um, well, I guess we'll jump right into League of Legends discussion. So first and foremost, I'm going to let DeClaude stand on his soapbox and talk for 20 minutes because his favorite champion in the game has finally been reworked it's finally been released he's been able to grab it play it and just destroy as many noobs as he can so to sorry you really tease all the listeners there because i thought you were going to talk about pantheon <laughs> the pantheon thing at worlds and they've pantheon all been is talking my favorite about champion, this yeah yeah scion was my favorite champion before pantheon was even released so that's what made me happy about his rework he's still up there in my favorites i was very Happy to see Insect pick Pantheon for Worlds, but we'll let the rundown talk about that. It was awesome. Anyway, Scion. I got to play with Scion, and I played a lot of Scion, and I died a lot on Scion. I love his passive, so <laughs> I didn't mind dying. My KDA is now in the chitter, but I would do things like go into a, an inner turret, run in there and tank it with my W as long as I could, auto-attack it down, and then die, and then finish it off with the passive. All these sorts of fun things on Scion. I love how his abilities work. 
Uh, I was worried about his Q being too hard to hit, but it's not because at any point in the Q, you can cancel it. It just depends on how far it goes and whether it stuns or not. So, uh, And then the damage, of course, is increased slightly, but you can still get it out. It's not like all or nothing kind of thing. Um, he's fun. I played him a fair amount top and a fair amount in the jungle, and I played him one game support. And support Scion is actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's <laughs> You just keep chucking those minions at him, and it does 150% <laughs> extra damage. So as we haven't goes talked through. about what any of his new abilities do. We haven't really talked about the new Scion, so do you want to give us a yeah. brief rundown of how they all work? Yeah, yeah. His, his Q ability, des- uh, actually, let me start with his passive. His passive now, it's kind of like Kog'Maw, activate on death. Um, when he dies, he does a second or two, and then he rises up, and he drops his axe. He has um, increased attack speed. Well, not increased. It's a base, a flat attack speed. It doesn't matter what your attack speed is in the game. It doesn't affect his passive, by the way. Items don't affect his passive. However, I think this is a bug. I can use Hydra while in passive. Huh. Oh, I can sit there and use the active on Hydra. I did but not I can't know use, that. You can also use Zonias while in passive. <laughs> now, if you use <laughs> the your Zonias... Does decay? Yes, it does. If you okay. use the Zonias, it doesn't prolong your existence on the battlefield. So <laughs> it's, it is kind of wonky how it works, but you do percent of the target's maximum health in damage every hit, which is nice. And you now, the problem is. Steal, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, you get life steal to help counteract the, uh, the uh, idea that your health is decaying. And it decays faster the longer you're up. So you're going to die within a certain amount of time, regardless. But you can sit there auto attacking. As if you're auto attacking something, you will live longer than if you just stood there. Um, and so this makes you not want to chase. If you die in lane, for example, and by a gank or whatever, what may be, if they're not low enough and not in your range, you might want to just CS. That way, you kind of negate the um, effect of losing CS and not getting that while you're uh, dead, and you also prevent them from pushing lane to your turret. Since this uh, but, is, uh, have you noticed you gain experience if you're killing things while dead? Like, this is a new mechanic. Like, Kog'Ma, I don't I, think um, you do, but that's a totally different thing. You don't have the same type of control there. I haven't noticed. I don't think you do. Okay. But you do get the gold, obviously, for everything sure. that you kill. That's and a big, big deal, too. It is. And you can hit structures, which is great. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'll use it to finish off an inhibitor if I go in and try to dive the inhibitor, that, which is why I died a lot. But it also has, it turns <laughs> all of your abilities into a brief movement speed increase, which is pretty nice. So let's say you died level two, so you only have uh, W and Q, for example. Then you can only use W or Q. So I've, I've been defaulting, you know, R for everything, and I realized, why, isn't, why am I getting, not getting my movement speed bonus? Oh, I didn't train R yet. So I don't have it. So it turns all the abilities that you currently have into a new one, which just gives you a movement speed boost. And then once you die, you die. You go back on your death spawn timer. But that's his passive. It's susceptible to slows and CC, though, kind of like York mm-hmm. uh, Ultimate. So you can be tied down and make pretty much useless. So um, it's really great, though, for big team fights where there's a lot of chaos. You can go running in. You can try to hit the closest target it does percent maximum health so you can hit the tank and try to whittle him away for your uh, teammates whatever the case may be that's his passive very fun uh, I like it better than his old passive his old passive was really really underwhelming oh yeah it was now and difficult to appreciate what they did is they moved the passive effect from his old E and they put it on his new W which is Death's Caress it, or it used to be Death's Caress now it's Soul Furnace it's pretty much the same thing as it was before. It's a shield that comes up. You, if it dies, or I'm sorry, yeah, if they remove the shield before you have a chance to pop it, it won't explode and do damage. Otherwise, after a certain amount of time, it will, or you can reactivate it after, I think there's a global cooldown on it for one second or half a second, and then you can use it and it does damage. Now, the damage is now um, increased based on your target's health, which is nice. And the shield is increased based on your health. So the more health you build, the better shield you get, which is really good. So you can build... uh, AP, that's for sure. Right. So not quite as overpowered as Riven, where you just build flat attack damage in your shield. Awesome. You still got to build health on Scion. But you get health anyway passively from it just for killing units. You get two health per unit killed or eight per champion. Does that contribute uh, to his base health or his bonus health? Uh, it looks like health. it adds to his base maximum, his maximum health. 
So it's I'm assuming it's not right, but, but bonus a, health like, as a unit. I know there's mechanics that only affect bonus health as opposed to base. Yeah. So I'm that's not sure. That's a good. That's a good question. Because like even um, that ability that the uh, the shield scales only off your bonus health. So if it's if it's all going to his base health, then yeah, you get bonus health for killing units, no, and that's no, amazing. Science but shield pretty sure it's shields max himself ten percent of his maximum health, and so his passive yeah. gains Where? two maximum health whenever he kills a unit. I'm reading it right now off of surrender at twenty. So. Right. So whenever yep. he kills a unit, so. he's scaling his shield passively. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it scales with it. Um, so that's pretty much the only remnants of old scion there, other than the oh, fact I know that what flexes. I was what are you thinking of? Uh, there, there, there is an item or was an item that scaled only off bonus health. And that's oh, what okay. I was thinking of there. But anyway, um, that, those are the only remnants of his old self. Um, other than the fact that he says, I'll be back sometimes when he goes into his passive, which is a little Arnie shout out, I guess. Can and, I ask um, a quick question about his, his passive? Yeah, sure. Uh, since I haven't been able to touch him yet, does, can you use Q when, you're, when you are reborn? Can you use Q and then do they all go on cooldown, or is can you do Q W E R and continue to gain movement speed? They all go on cooldown. They all share a cooldown. You how, use it once, and that's you, all you got. How long's the uh, cooldown on it when you use it? There, it's you use it once. Okay. Every and then there is no cooldown on the passive either. So if you die, you revive. You go back to lane. You die again immediately. Your passive comes back, and you have the cooldowns all refreshed. So. The passive is always there when you die, no matter what. It's not like you have to worry about any kind of cooldown for it, like Volibear's passive, whatever. So, um, but you can't use any abilities. You can use some items, and they all share that. That movement sword, <coughs> here's a thing to note about it. Don't just use it right away. Um, sit there and auto-attack. If they try to get away from you or they use a slow, that's when you use it because, you know, you've got a short movement speed burst after you use it. So you can kind of manipulate it to make the most out of your passive. His Q is really cool. It's not a single target stun like Cryptus, Cryptic Stare or Gaze, whatever it used to be. Now it's called Decimating Slash. It's a charged AoE towards your cursor ability. It goes out about the range, I would say, of what Rise can uh, hit you with his Rune Prison. Because I notice every time your Rune Prison is being I'd hit him with a Decimating Smash. Um, it is really cool because if you channel for the max amount of time, which I believe is two seconds, it will do the max amount of damage and will knock them up and stun them for the longest. But you can react, you can get the stun after one second of channeling. Now, it is a channel, so it can be interrupted by stuns, CC, monsoon, things to throw back, knockups, whatever the case may be. So if you know they're going to hit you with something like that, you can try to use it really quick, but you won't get a knockup effect. You'll just get flat damage. And the range slowly increases out, kind of like Varus and Zerath but on a much smarter, smaller scale. And it's towards your cursor. Be aware of that, so know where your cursor's at when you're going to do this. Um, mm -hmm. It's really useful. It's a great anti-engage. Uh, someone's coming into all in your group. You throw that up there. It's a zoning tool. Everybody can see that little graphic showing where he's going to slash. So they don't want to stand in it. So everybody moves away. So it's good to zone an area. It's great for protecting an ally. You're like, don't come in this area. And then if they do... They get knocked up anyway, and you're you're helping peel. So it's a really cool ability, and it does a ton of damage. It does a decent amount of, of damage. damage. Um, At rank one, you, I believe it can do up to 200 damage. Have you noticed that if you just use it without channeling it all the way, it almost feels like an auto attack reset as well? It does. It Just like when you use Hydra, it feels like mm -hmm. an auto attack reset. It's the same kind of thing. It's like a quick little slash, and it's not very far away from you right. at all. Either, it it so. does a little bit of damage when you do that too. You don't get the stun out of it, but um, say it, it, it can be the difference between getting a little bit of extra damage off to kill somebody and not. Yep. So if you need to do it, you can. And if you're jungling and you almost have the minions down, it just comes off cooldown, you can use the quick... Don't mm -hmm. channel the whole thing because it's overkill and you want to move quickly through the jungle. So you can just quickly throw it out there, slash, continue, move on to the next camp. It's... It's a really fun ability, and like I said, rank one, it does a lot of damage, so it's really good there. But I like to get Death's um, Soul Furnace, the W, rank one, just because I don't want to miss out on whatever CS I had adding to my health for that level one, and usually I hit level two fast enough to where I don't have to worry about it. Plus, it's great if they do some early aggression on you. You can shield it up and eat it, which is nice. Um, so that's Q, that's W, that's his passive. E. Now, 
here's something that not a lot of people are doing, but I noticed that some people are. I like to max my E first. This is an ability where if you, th- you throw it out, it's like a little skill shot. It's got somewhat of a short distance. If you hit a champion, it reduce or whatever target you hit, it reduces their armor by 20%. It's percent based. So in the early stages, it's not too great to hit them in the face with it to make you do any extra damage, really. Gives them a slow, 40% slow. And it's a couple seconds, and bam, that's what it is. Only costs 25 mana. It is not that bad of a cooldown. If you hit a minion, it'll launch it, kind of like Syndra's um, Scat of the Week, how it launches her ball forward. <laughs> Only it goes like twice as far. <laughs> it, goes, yeah. it goes pretty much pretty much as far, maybe a little bit further than Syndra's Scat of the Week. But it's in a straight line, and you can kind of manipulate. But whatever that minion passes through takes 50% extra damage on top of the damage it's already going to do. So 150% extra damage is what it's going to take. And the slow still applies, but no armor uh, debuff. So there's no 20% armor removal just from getting hit by the minion that hit you. But it's a great harass tool. It does a lot of damage. Um, However, it doesn't scale with your AD. It scales with AP. So I like to max that one first in lane just because... Because the early game the earlier, is when, when the damage is meaningful. Right. Sure. But I but and, well well it, 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 here's the same reason. Um when playing Olaf, I used to max his E all the time before it had any kind of ratios to it. I'm not building AP, so I pretty much have nothing that'll benefit from late game use of it. So I max it to get the most damage I can from it early, and I can still get additional damage as I'm building items towards my other abilities. The other piece I'm building of health this and AD. Too is that his mana costs on his Q and W, if you're just using those they abilities, increase. they they cost a lot of mana. So this will give you sort of this an in between that yeah, exactly. It stays static. You're only going to be using 25 mana every time you use it and the damage is going up. Yes, the damage will go up with your other abilities, but it's like a fifth of your those are, I mean the damage on those is gonna go up either way just by buying the items they right. scale with. Like, right. And the cooldown goes down on it when you rank it. If, on your e. if you're spamming your That's Q or good, your W, I mean, if you use it like more than six times, you're oom and then kind of yeah. useless. You're, so. you're oom a he lot. He only starts with 200 mana, right? And then he gets 45 per level, so he doesn't have a lot of innate mana resource. Right, exactly. And to have that 25 mana harass that you can just constantly keep throwing out there to in- increase or decrease the cooldown and increase the damage just by ranking it. Um, I'm not going to be harassing too much with Q or W. I'll use it as you know, if they're coming all in, or if I can manage to land an E, then maybe I'll throw a Q for extra damage if I want to go all in on them. But by maxing E in lane, in jungle, I do max Q, by the way, just to let you know, because the extra damage you get clears. You can wipe out all the little guys, the little rates. With one Q. <laughs> with one Q, right, fully charged. So that's different. I'm talking about in lane, I like to max E. And it's a matter of whether you hit that skill shot or not. If you hit it every time, you're going to bully every opponent. I don't care who they are. But if you're not hitting it, like I faced a Gnar who was very good at hopping away from it every time, he pretty much kicked my ass. But I faced a Rise, and there's nothing he could do. He'd come in to Q me, I'd hit W and throw an E at him real quick, and then he'd be slowed and then hit him with a full rank Q. And then he'd be on his back foot, and I'd zone him with even more ease. And everyone's surprised by the range of that minion right now. Because it can mid lane, it'll hit you at your turret. So I've killed people who have tried to hide it by their turret, low health. I push it in, and then as soon as the mini wave comes up, bloop, throw it out there, bloom, get the kill. I'm never in danger because I'm nowhere near them. So it's neat. It's it's kind of pantheon esque, and you know the Q spamming with the static mana, the low cost. So it fits well with my play style. I can sit there and harass them with some weird little ranged pain in the ass troll shit. And then if they, I want to all in, I have my other abilities for that as well. It was, like, in playing him just the one time, like, that was the big thing I noticed right away. Like, that ability is going to separate everyday, or, you know, average Zion players from the good Zion players, the people who really know what they're doing. Because everything else is, like, it's pretty self-explanatory there. Like, you just... It, right. it's obvious what you're saying and there isn't really there isn't a lot of nuance to it you know you press w and you run at people that's how the ability has always worked yeah. um and then q you know it like he he's prone for so long that it's very obvious 
what he's he going to do. And you himself for two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you either need to like your team needs to be ready to react or if you're playing against it's like, just get out of that zone. Don't even deal with him. You can also be stunned while you're casting your Q, which will cancel it as well. Mm hmm. So you got to be aware of that. Um, if you, if you're, I did a lot of Scion v. Scion because I'm doing Team Builder so I can secure him to play him every time. And if he starts channeling his Q, you don't want to just stand there and start channeling your Q right after because he'll interrupt. Cancel yours. Right. So little things like that. Now there's some cool synergy. Um, Blitzcrank. I saw a Blitzcrank and Scion combo. That was just insane. Mid, mid game. You know, Scion was jungle. Blitzcrank was uh, the support. And then eventually in team fights, Blitz would grab somebody. He'd already be charging his Q at Blitz. So Blitz would grab somebody, boom, they'd immediately be knocked up by that, knocked up by Blitz, and just CC for days. Um, let me talk about his R, his new ultimate. It is um, Unstoppable Onslaught. Now, it pretty much has a range farther, I think it's farther than TF and Pantheon's ultimate range. Uh, it's a little bit farther than that. But it is increased by movement speed. So if you have more movement speed, you'll go further than the graphic shows you. Hmm. So, for example, um, if you have your boots, your movement speed boots, and you're out of combat when you initiate your ult, you will come down and finish the ultimate outside of the actual indicator where it shows you. I don't know if that's intended or a bug, but it makes sense. So um, I can home guard but anyway, out of the base and just with my ultimate, you can really home guard, fast. but it's not exponential. It's not really that far. Like maybe. Um, uh, a Q range. I mean, in, even in that, even in that case, you would almost you have, be better <laughs> off just home guarding to the until home guard is gone and then turning your ult on. Right, right, exactly. You will get much more range doing that. Um, good point, Dom. But it, so I don't think it's really intended to do that, but it just does. Now I think because when you come out of your ultimate, you're still running a little bit, and he runs a few steps and then slams the ground. But what he does is he just charges. He's immune to CC, not spell effects, but CC. Any kind of CC, will, he'll brush it off, kind of like Vi when she's ulting you. Um, he just runs in a straight line towards your cursor. You can steer him very slightly. If you move your cursor sharply down, he'll slowly start to curve towards it. So it's easy to mess it up and run into terrain. Uh, if you hit terrain, you stun yourself for a brief moment, but you still slam the ground and slow everybody around you and do some damage. If you hit a champion, then you will slam the ground, excuse me, knock them up, and you'll slow people in another shockwave around them. So it's it's just a really good way to initiate a fight. You can use it to escape because you're immune to CC. Um, you can cast you can't cast spells while in it, but you can cast W. W is the one spell you can cast. No yeah, I noticed you that. You can cast your W when you're ulting, when you're using your Q, whatever the case may be. But anyway, everybody on the map can hear him holler when he's ulting. You know when he's ulting. You hear like a, a drum sound. and It makes like a, a pretty scary noise. Yeah, like it's a scary almost noise. It's like, like a turn like Nocturne-esque. Nocturne yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's like Nocturne in that regard where you'll hear it. Um, so be on the alert if you hear it. You know, if you know you're in a spot where maybe you're low sitting there trying to back at a turret and you hear it, maybe he's trying to come in and finish you, who knows. So that's his ultimate. Um, you can stop it early if you hit R again. And it, he'll take a few steps and then slam down. So just be aware of that. You won't immediately just stop where you're at. You can't stop that freight train like that. He's got to slow down a little bit. And keep in mind, don't use it while you're in the jungle. There are certain spots where there's a straight angle where you might be able to get in, but you're going to hit terrain. If you are, before you hit the terrain, you won't stun yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. If you know you're going to face plan into the ruins of a turret, player-created the... terrain does stop good. it. So, Adam, oh, you're yeah, Azir. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. You're oh, Azir yeah. can stop him. Oh, I know. You throw I've out the <laughs> It won't knock him back, though. It'll I just stop it. Dead. I ran into a trundle uh, pillar one time, and it was uh, like I just started cursing because... That's obnoxious. Like, that's a huge counter to that champion. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that and um, Jarvan. Actually, I tested it myself because, you know, Jarvan jumps on you. Chances are if he's jumping from the front or the side, he's going to body block you and Cyan's going to hit you and do the damage, blah, blah, blah. But it, I tested it with my buddy where I started the ult as Cyan and Jarvan was behind me and he casts his ult and it creates the terrain fast enough to stop you. So you face plant into the cataclysm terrain. <laughs> so... Terrain stops him, player created or not, doesn't matter. It will stop him out of his ult. 
but it's neat. It's a great way for me. I, I use it as an extra interrupt for Katarina because she's going to do a lot of damage while I'm trying to charge my Q for a second to stop her if she's sitting there ulting me. So I'll immediately just alt and knock her up real quick. It'll do the least amount of damage because the damage scales the farther he runs. But it's a great interrupt. It's more CC for him. He's got slows. He's got knockups. He's just got so much utility now. I think that my biggest, so that's pretty much a rundown of what here he does. Scion is that he's that his ultimate is too one trick pony to use for anything decent. Like you said, you can't use it out of the jungle very well because there's so many angles and so many walls in the jungle. And then but the way I look at least. him, well, it, and here's the thing though. It, let me look. You know, look at this at like an LCS standpoint. For example, you have a dragon fight. And it doesn't have to be that. It can be solo queue. You have a dragon fight where you guys are kind of walking back and forth. It's pretty obvious when he's going to start running at you, and you can make it out of the way really quickly. And now he's, you know, he, he sure he can stop it early. He might be able to hit one or two people, but it's not a Vi where it's instant. It's not a Rengar where it's instant jump or you know whatever it may be. <laughs> well, like it seems like at that point you everybody. have to use it as just that small AOE and not for damage. It's. Late, when you have it fully ranked later in the game, it's like a 30 second cooldown. It is that up is it's up on, all the time uh, at so later in the game. Use it, don't hold on to it. Use I mean, it, when it you like can. the the base cooldown is 60 seconds, but you presumably have some kind of CDR. So if you get a frozen heart, the uh, chances are you will. It, it does sort of pigeonhole you into where you're at because you can either basically charge right down mid lane, charge from top to bottom, or just, like top to mid bot to mid and like kind of swing around in lanes but it if you're gonna do it in the jungle it's gonna have to be over a real short distance and it's just there more now, for like the shock factor here's than the anything thing. else here's the thing he doesn't have a wide um what's that called missile width when he, he looks huge but i've <laughs> i've had it where i've maneuvered around the inside you know how the turret's closer to the terrain and staggered yeah. I've, oh, are you I've maneuvered, maneuvered around that? Between the turret and the terrain, gotten through it. I didn't think I would. I thought I would stop on the turret and, you know, initiate there. But I went through it, <laughs> kept going, and then I went through and I hit the other turret in the back and I took both turret shots. I'm like, ah, what do I do? Crap! You know, so it is very thin and you can split hairs with it. So you can thread the needle. So you got to be careful. Don't, if you go into the masses, don't let it stop by hitting a champion. If you're where you want to be, hit R again so you stop yourself and you. And it's that it's also really easy to sidestep with a dash. Like it is, but you stop it real quick. You you, you that's can, true. You can cancel you get the it. slow. Yeah, because it can slams it. the ground. You get a little shockwave around you. You get the slow, which is just enough for you to cue in the direction and hit it. Just be aware there's a couple of steps he takes before he stops, so don't think you're going to stop right when you hit the R again. Now, it's so useful up a lane. Um, look at, like Adam, like you're talking about LCS, for example. Sieges, lane fights, um, he can initiate perfectly in those scenarios. Sure, it's not Vi where he just targets someone and says, here, you use it from wherever <laughs> here you're you at. Here you die. Well, and yeah, here you die, but you got to be in range to hit with that target. Another this is a skill shot. You just hit it and go. Another piece of that too, say you get your alt top lane and you're able to force the enemy back. They don't have teleport, you do. You don't need to burn your teleport to get back to top lane. You can just blow your ult, it's going to be up again in a minute anyway, to just yeah. run all the way back to lane and beat them back and get a slight advantage on CS or yep. XP. So like, I, I'm i a big fan of just trying to use his ult every time it's up, um, especially if I'm really far away from a place that I'm supposed to be. It's just like a decent travel tool to get to places where stuff could p potentially happen um plus again you can even say that they engage your team in bot lane and you know they're they're about to go in if even if you're on the other side of the map and you know that they're going in you could pop your ult and it might be enough to make the enemy team second guess themselves that there's a big guy charging at them from half the world right. away especially if you um, did it before yeah, you can you can do a little bit of mind game stuff, but but even then, if you use it, if you want to gank a lane, you can use it from almost from base, and there's nothing they can do. They can try to sidestep, but you're going to be there really quickly and able to influence that lane. If if you're standing in the middle of mid lane, you can make it all the way to top, bottom, and either base. Yeah, no problem. So it's it's also a great get out of jail free card. You're split pushing a sign, for example. 
and they send everybody on to you. You just hit your R and you're out of there. They're not going to CC you. <laughs> you're gone. You take it all the way back. They can't CC you. You're CC immune and you just run your way, your happy little ass away and you're good to go. So it's, I, I find, I don't find it, I don't see it as a pigeonhole ability at all. I see it as multiple uses. You can use it for the split push, you can use it as escape, you can use it as an initiate, and as Chiro was saying, you can use it for mind games. <laughs> or you can just use it as a travel tool to get to where you want to get really quickly. So. I think it's so funny that it is a pretty effective escape tool as long as there's nobody behind you to block with their body because like thematically that's kind of completely against what this champion is about. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Thematically, it's way against what he's about. Oh, yeah. But use it. It's fun. It's a great way to escape. And like you said, I've, I've had people flash in front of me. Kind of like when Ram is powerballs to get away, you flash in front of him to stop him. Or you body block to stop him from going after your ADC or whoever. If, you, know, you can still... There's counterplay to it. If but. you can land the alt on more than one person from pretty far away, it will completely change a fight, though. It hits really hard. It does. It, it's really fun. And if, if you land it, you almost get a guaranteed Q knockup, too, as long as they don't flash or something like that. So yep. word on the street right, right now, from what I've heard, is Scion Jungle is very powerful. He, he has a very safe, it is. clear, and very good gank. Starts off a little slow, but after you get your second buff, it's cake. You can You're never going to be you don't have to, No, and if you have blue have buff... Four. If you have blue buff, those mana issues that you have went away. So like, and then once you have your, uh, what is it, quill coat? Yep, yep, it helps you even more. And you what what? It, it, lizard elder. I like. I lean more towards the lizard elder, but the quill coat is great for late game. I've gotten over six k health. And with from, with the narrow yeah. with the narrow areas in the jungle, he's not the best person to try and duel in there when he has. A Q that can it's arguably sorry. cover a com the entire area you can run through. Well, you can so. go over terrain. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're on the other side of the white. Someone's fighting the white, and you're in the lane. You can sit there and troll and hit them with your Q. And you can also launch the white at them. Now, if you're on the side with with the minion, you can't launch it over terrain. Minions will stop at terrain. They won't go over it. But if you're on the other side of terrain and you hit a minion, it'll go flying <laughs> until it hits terrain or something. So. That's I've used that as well as a little troll tactic with him. He's got such neat stuff you can do with him because it's all skill shot based, which is really really fun. I like skill shots. So now you were talking a little bit about split pushing, and then you're talking about six k health. Like, how are you building him? Because if you're building him as tank, you don't want to be split pushing. No, but no, if you're I, building him, honestly, like that was when I played him. I, I didn't even know. It's like, what do I build? I guess I just build health. I, I, like, no. I, I honestly looked at it, I'm like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to build this champion. If you want to tank, if you want to be a tank, you want to build health and, of course, resistances, and then Frozen Heart, you know, you want to get the Frozen Heart for the mana, the cooldowns, and the, the extra armor, etc. But I like the Randuins just because, same, same as the Sejuani mindset, but the Sejuani W actually does more damage based on more health you have. Scion doesn't. He doesn't hurt you more because he's healthier. He hurts you more when he has Infinity Edges and big, scary blades. So... I like to build him. In the beginning, I tried playing him tanky at first. I got over 6k health. I was a, a tanky monster. I can get into a fight with my R. He's, he has his place there as a tank. You build him as a DPS carry. You're innately, if you're farming and CSing and getting kills or assists, you're innately building your health. So you're kind of getting tanky anyway. And if you build a, a attack damage, you're also a huge damage threat. That Q, I'm telling you, that really, it really hurts. It will wreck <laughs> people. You can... I, I played him uh, and I built, I, just for fun, I wanted to build him full damage. I could blow people up in like a Q, like pre W, EQ, auto attack reset with Hydra. I could borderline assassinate any squishy target that got in the way. And that's not yep. even including if I actually was able to land an ult or anything like that. Um, he hits really hard, but when you go that route, even with that extra health, you still feel really squishy i i i had 4k I health and i i felt like that didn't mean a damn thing yeah you you do feel squishy it's not like you take extra damage but you're getting into the thick of the things really mm -hmm. quickly so everyone's panicking and going oh my god kill the sign kill that giant thing that i all this is the only thing i can click on on this map right now because Sion is freaking huge he's bigger than some champions he's bigger than every champion <laughs> he should be bigger than you know yeah. <laughs> 
Um, he's slightly bigger than yeah. Nautilus. There have been a lot of complaints about like Nautilus, Malphite, those types of champions who are right. not bigger than Scion, but and they just feel was, <laughs> they feel now. small around him. Like I had a Nunu, I had a Nunu stand next to me, and he's just a little, little baby Yeti, you know, or big Scion stand, and there's a little Yeti, and then even smaller little Nunu kid on top. So it's like, mm, yeah, this. <laughs> the comparisons don't really match up. So they need to work on some of the size scaling of other champions that should be big, like fucking Nunu, Giant Yeti. <laughs> Nunu, Nautilus, so. I, Maokai, Renekton, Nasus, yeah. all of those. Malphite, right. for example. But right. Scion is fun, he has a new place, and he's versatile. You can play him as tank, you can play him as damage, you can play him out of the jungle, you can play him top, and you can play him support. Yeah, he's not going to be one of the popular supports, but I went... A uh, relic shield, just a standard support build on sure. him. You get the health from the sight stone, which synergizes well with his W. You throw minions to harass. I don't think y um, you can't see a Q from if you're hiding in the bush, just like with uh, Nunu's nice. ult. You could argue so, that half of the power for him on support is all from the counter engaged because he becomes sort of like the anti engaged support. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, jungler comes flying in towards your AD carry. You can kind of cut him off in a line straight ahead, hit your Q. By the time he gets in there, if they want to go in there, they'll get knocked sure, out. Sure, it's, it's Not, the they Janna mindset. Well, finish. and if, if they go in and they aren't able to ever reach your AD carry and they're focusing you, which is pretty optimal for a situation like that, you turn around, E them, and their armor is reduced, your carry can just flip the switch and turn around and kill them too. Right, because so they're, they're slowed too. Yeah, yeah, they're slowed and they're going to be taking more damage. So I did one game of support, so I can't really talk too extensively about it, but I saw its place. It worked. So you are doing damage to minions innately. If you hit an E, you're damaging every minion that minion you just launch passes through. You might screw up some last hit <laughs> for your uh, lane partner. So, oh, here's another thing. Don't hit E on a minion that's, that E will kill. Because if the E kills that minion, it won't launch it because it's dead. So... You got to hit a minion healthy enough to survive the damage from your the initial damage from me. And you need to remember, it's not a point and click. It's a skill shot ability. It's really easy to think that one is just like you click the minion and then it gets it gets flung or whatever. But that's a skill shot. It's, it's so. all based on your positioning because it will go from wherever you're standing. It'll go from a straight line from where you're at. And, and truly, really, that like part of that might just be the mentality of the old E ability where it was just a point and click stun. Um. But he's it was yeah. the Q, right? Sure, whatever it was. I mean, uh, for all intents and purposes, he is a brand new champion. Mm -hmm. Like there is mm -hmm. one leftover ability from his old kit. But if you if you'd ever played Scion before, he might as well be feel, exactly. Yeah, he's going to be completely unfamiliar yep. to you. So play with him. Try him out. You know, you will. I I die a lot. My KDI KDA on him is atrocious, but I try to use neat things and, with passive and i i know riot was saying, <laughs> riot was saying that they wanted him to feel like slow and lumbering and again you feel every bit of that slow and lumbering sort of even just with his, his auto attack wind he's up. like and i i love his it's, auto it's attack. like rumble obnoxious yeah his auto attack animation on turrets looks great though because he like he shoulders his, it. yeah he shoulder charges the turret it's it's actually pretty cool but uh it he can be pretty easily kited, um, and if I, if you're not, be. and if, if you're, you're not you're last, mobile, if you're not last picking him, somebody can really shut you down by picking a Nivea or a Zir or somebody like that who can just say, "Hey, you're never gonna get your ult off." Well, unless you see them use it first, right? You know, and it does have such a short cooldown, and you can point blank it. I mean, you're sitting there surrounded by foes. You hit R, and you just pretty much knock everybody up real quick and do some damage. And you slow everyone else around him. So it's still useful. Just not as scary <laughs> as him charging out of nowhere. Well, so I that's think, Sion. I think I pretty much exhaustively talked about him. I was Hopefully say, everybody I think we've knows. pretty much beat him into the ground. And he'll probably resurrect <laughs> for the next podcast. And we'll go over him again. Nice. Well said. Um, it, it's, yep. a, <laughs> it's about time He's we fun. shoulder the discussion. Uh, but yeah, we, let's go ahead and move on to a next part of the discussion. Even though it's, you know... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have a good transition for this one. So, segue. We're going to start going to talk about... Uh, we have more champions to discuss in the last 20, 25 minutes of this podcast. And Dom had brought up a good point to me today that there has been a return and a rise of a number... And a rise of a number of champions. Not rise. A rise. Um, I've got four right here in the document. Rumble, Janna, Zillion, Jace, for example, have been played quite a bit recently. These are... 
the these are the result of worlds and everything and we've talked about it to death and everything ghost crawler even brought it up on the episode you know the, when the pros play champions whether on their streams or uh, especially in competitive level play that does tend to influence how things play out in solo queue um and you know when world started we saw a lot of champions that we really just hadn't been seeing at all uh come back into play and Rumble, Janna, Zillion, and Jace are kind of the four big ones in my mind at this point. Yeah, Jace. Jace mid. Mm -hmm. Samsung saving him until it mattered, oh, yeah. I guess, the semifinals. They didn't want to bust him out as a little strategy because they can kick ass with any other champions. And they're like, well, time to show everybody, show the world Jace mid. You know, well, surprise is his EQ does a ton of damage. Well, okay, here's the thing. Jace mid, wow. that's great. He did, you know, a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, cleaned, cleaned it up as Jace mid. But you can't um, discredit, like, Dade for playing Rengar jungle and just absolutely dominating. If you listen to oh, episode yeah. number 33 of ALCS Rundown, which should be out very shortly. I was on it yesterday. We actually had a very long discussion about Dade's Rengar and how well he played and why that, you know, was you can't one. You can't have it. Was more of the deciding factors. Well, I'm not trying to take anything away from uh, who's is it? Not pawn. Who's blue? No, the white's white's mid. I can't think of his name right now. Pawn. Pawn. Right? It's pawn. Yeah. Come yeah. On. It's pawn. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> I, I want. I thought I was wrong because I know. Uh, like. <laughs> no, you're right. It's pawn. Like, it, it was just go you. Go you can now. talk about specific games and everything, but Jace was picked or banned 14 times throughout the, the bracket stage. Sure. Like, to date and everything. It wasn't just yep. one game that was causing Jace to suddenly surge back into relevance here. I mean, like, he has suddenly become a prominent <laughs> it threat was one on of those the competitive things. scene, and that's what trickles down <laughs> into solo queue. The pros made it look like there was some big Jace secret, <laughs> and now right. it's going to swing <laughs> back with these like terrible... With There's a big yeah. secret. No, the, nothing changed. The reverberating <laughs> echoes of worlds is about to wreak havoc on solo. <laughs> well, part of what makes him strong right now in worlds and out of it is the fact that we're in a really late game meta right now. And Jace being one of those champions with two sets of abilities early is a very good early game champion. And he's really good at pushing, pushing down towers. He's great mid lane on that. He can kind of counteract those mid laners who... A lot of them don't have a lot of mobility. A lot of them don't have a lot of wave clear early. And he can shove down those towers, and that kind of prevents um, your bot lane from getting to really late game. That prevents a lot of... That takes a lot of jungle pressure and puts it on you as opposed to having them camp bot or having them camp top. And it just gives you the ability to kind of control the map. If you take that first tier or that first mid tower early enough, that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the enemy team. Well, and even say that you take that first tier turret and they try to turn around and take a dragon out of it, he has just a huge factor in in his ability to annoy and just pepper people with his EQ. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really hard to try and swing a dragon with a team bearing down on you when you're eating, if you can land poke. them, if you're <laughs> eating all the poke to the face particularly early when he gets some levels in his queue, it can quarter health some of the squishier champions. And then if he's ahead anyway and he's building damage, it does a, it, it does a whole lot of damage. And They it's, tended to pair him with Corky and Rumble mm -hmm. for that extra poke. And then, of course, for the anti-engage. Oh, yeah, he's a wonderful poke count champ. Oh, he has a has great been. siege also. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he has his awesome wave clear on the flip side when you, you're, you're also being sieged. So... Well, when, when you've like, got champions like Nidalee who are taken out of, you know, t taken by somebody or has been removed from the board by picks and bans, it's it's really logical to go to the next step because all transformation cha transformation champions have been strong at one point or the other, and of course there is a logic order of it with you know like Nidalee, Jace, Elise type of you know going down there with the three that can that can transform at level one, and Right now, you don't really play Elise too much in lane because she's so good out of the jungle being able to tank with her spiders. So you remove Nidalee from the game, and who else are you going to pick? Somebody who's really good at level 2. He's really good at level 1. Who's really good at level 6. You know, throughout the almost the entire point of the game, Jace is relevant. And, and it's a great reason that he's being picked now in Worlds because you need that relevance for the entire game. But more players, I feel, are seeing that. And, and, you know, the skill level of players is actually increasing as long as those champions stay Well, he's, he's also an incredibly safe laner because he can, you know, he, mm -hmm. he hits really hard and he auto-attacks. A lot of the people in mid right now, I mean, Zed's still popular. 
He's melee. Yes, he can poke with his Q, but Jace can also... Hey, Zed misses his Q. Jace just shot you with two auto attacks. You lost the trade. Um, and he's got a knockback that slows you, yep. which is great for jungle closer. ganks. Yep. He, uh, it's, it's weird. He doesn't really... He, he's either great at long, drawn-out fights where he can poke people down or skirmishes where he gets in really quick, does some damage, and then gets out. It's it's like those it's middle big, range like, fights it, that he's not good it, it's in. But to the skies, which really yeah. changes. The, the Q on the to the skies Q slows, and then you can walk in front of them because they're slow and knock them back into the team, and that mm -hmm. does percentage of life damage. It always has been. A lot of people stopped playing him though because they felt like he needed the mana really badly. Well, he needed to, to be able to poke the Q and Tier got a couple nerfs. His his E also used to hit way harder, and people were just howling and hollering when they nerfed Q. the percentage. No, no, his before his Q was oh, even yeah, popularized yeah, yeah. The, his, the level his first. Form e. His hammer E hit so hard, and that was when you could play like Bruiser Jace. When they nerfed that, people were ranting that, oh, you just broke the champion and whatever. And then he just became, oh, we're just never going to level W, put all our points into Q and E, and start quarter healthing people from half the lane away. Like, the problem is in the late game, late game fights, though, he's still squishy. He's very squishy. So just like any poke, poke champion, you know, you're there for your poke, but if they decide to... You know, pull the trigger and jump on you. Sure, you can knock one away, well, maybe, but it's positioning. They're still gonna kill. That's being if squishy they is fine out of the right. mid lane. Like that's just exactly. expected. But right. when people were playing top lane Jace, there was this like, I mean, people get this attitude. If you're the top laner, you're supposed to be kind of durable and everything. Even if that's not true for the for what the champion is supposed to do, that's just a, a perception of top lane. Well, and it comes down to the, the, the old adage used to be if Nidalee, you know, if you just engage on Nidalee, she can't keep poking you down with spears. The problem is if she landed one spear in her heyday, it kind of countered all of your ability to go and all in because you have one person that's sitting at almost half life. So you don't necessarily have the most optimal full engage because if they can get away at all, they're going to keep hitting you with damage. Jace is starting to full, like he's starting to fall in that kind of same spot where yes, if you're able to get to him with more than one person, you can stop him. If one person gets to him, he can probably knock him away. But if you get hit or multiple people get hit by his EQ, it what, how are they supposed to engage, like full engage, if they're all sitting at half health and the rest of your team just cleans them up? Yeah, that's the idea of a poke comp. And he's well, he fell, he fell pretty out of favor at the beginning of the season when Shivana was huge, Renekton was huge. Um, all of those big tank champs where you needed someone tanky coming out of the top, and um, you had that sort of meta, and he really couldn't combat that at the time like as good as his poke was mm -hmm. he wasn't taking the tower fast enough he wasn't pushing them out of lane they had ridiculous sustain so he he fell a little bit out of favor but now he's back in a role where he can be a little squishier he can poke people down where they don't have the resistances that they need in order to combat his poke and to sustain it and then once you get that first tower down and I, I mean, everyone knows at some point the giant ARAM and there's nothing that you can do about it. Like you're just getting those cues Good to the point. face and you're the, just taking towers right. and sieging. And in team games, like a organized team like Samsung White, Dandy was feeding him all the blues. Mm -hmm. So those mana issues we were talking about? Gone. Non-existent. And all the so. CDR to keep shooting more giant exactly. blue yeah. balls that smack people for their health bar. <laughs> so well, yeah, I can see that that was a cool... Uh, cool point to see a new champion coming in to play jace and being so effective i like i really like to see the return of rumble being picked in the early group stages he was either picked or banned <laughs> oh, yeah. quite a bit Groups, it, group it, stages it, quarterfinals yeah. he's still it, being picked or banned quite a bit it goes I mean, back oh, yeah. to day's point here though and i think a lot of people need to realize that though we're uh, comp we're almost out of the tank meta on a top lane besides like maokai he's the only one that's really left up there and rumble Jace, they all do really well against him, or at least keep him confined because he doesn't do a lot of damage. So picking, and then Rumble if is fantastic for dragon fights. Just you huge teleport in and team fight. Oh, any I, mean, I mean, like he, or in anywhere respect, in the jungle, he's the exact opposite of Jace in this regard because he is so so good at team fights. Mm -hmm. Where Jace prefers skirmishes and, and then the the drawn out poke battle. Rumble's just like, yeah, come at me and, and eat fire. This <laughs> is how it is every year, though. Like Rumble is seen for a while, it disappears, and then like Worlds comes around, and it's like 
everybody's oh, yeah, back Rumble. to just Rumble's just oh, yeah. stomping Rumble. people Why are we in seeing four Jack? zero and fourteen. There's a reason behind that though. When you are looking at so you have Rumble and Worlds, and then people start playing it, and they stop playing it in solo queue, and then all of a sudden it's in Worlds again. That's because Rumble is a team fight oriented champ like he's an amazing 5v5 champ because mm -hmm. you have the coordination to fight in the jungle where he's most effective you can't get out of his ult as opposed to just aim ramming through mid lane where you just walk out of it you are going for the barons you're going for the dragons you're you're at working as a team in order to make the most of his ult if you're not working as a team to do that you lose a lot of that effectiveness you can't properly use it unless you have a lot of AOE lockdown, you can't properly use it in a lane. You're not going to get the most out of it. And he had a lot of bug for, um, fixes recently, um, a couple patches ago, that kind of tweaked some of his inconsistencies that'll make him a little bit more useful now. And he's, he's still extremely difficult to play with the way his auto attack animation works yes. and being able to Especially manage his pleasure. heat. Um, mm hmm like it, it, it's not a champion that anybody could just go pick up and just start dominating with. But he definitely. <laughs> I don't feel like I feel like he's really easy to just pick up and play. Like you just pick up and hit he's, congrats. You're playing no, Rumble now. He's, he's, he's the ultimate to, too hard to use. He's easy I, to I pick just up don't think and so. just like start using abilities. But if you want to be like that scary ass Rumble that goes four zero and fourteen on a world stage and crushes an entire team by himself, that you have to be really really good at that champion. To get the money to be at that point, to to know when you need to engage with your heat up or down or anything like that, to land that perfect ultimate, or to use your ultimate to zone people into running into another spot, there is a lot going on with that champion, and most people can't pull it off. I was gonna say he's no, one of those like, champions that really easy to play and really hard to master. You're yeah. not going to get the most out of him unless you really know what he does and really know how to abuse his skills. His ultimate Rumble is one of those champ is like probably the champion that makes me think like to a degree champions just click with people like it, it doesn't matter how easy or difficult a champion like to like sometimes you are just gonna get it because rumble just made perfect sense out of the gate for me i was like oh i understand exactly everything i have to do with this champion and it was just like from the get-go and so that's why, that's so, why many... I'm so confused that's when fine. people are like, oh, he's so difficult. I'm like, no, that, that's fine at all. You've got to manage his heat. The, the clicking, I, I understand that. It's kind of like the Azir thing that I've been here. It just clicked for yeah. me, and I've been just, been just you know, destroying with it. I get it, the champion. I understand that. I don't understand why people can't play it. But at the same time, I can look at the opposite side now that I see Rumble, and I say, he's really hard because, to Claude, you have to manage his heat really well. You have to keep yourself in the danger zone if you plan on trading. You have to understand how much your abilities are do. you know, how much heat you are gaining when producing from abilities when you should go in by using you a double QE yourself. to get your shield. Yeah, but you also hit so, harder. See, I think <laughs> that's why that sets it up is because you can fuck yourself over mm -hmm. if you're not very mindful yep. of things. And, in my, you know, going back to the ultimate point, I do find that very hard to use. And it was hard to use for a while because we didn't have champions like Victor out where every six seconds right. you could practice Same. a mini rumble ultimate. Yep. You yep. had to wait 60 seconds, then try, you know, in, in a team fight, some people may find it very hard to position your cursor very it, properly, and you have to start your mm -hmm. cursor back where, you know, you're going to start the line of rockets. So if you don't have good twitch reflexes or you lose your cursor in a fight, you may, you know, you may not be able to land the ultimate as well. And that really is the turnaround of every rumble. It's the, <laughs> the ultimate. game breaker. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've I've hit many rumble alts where they engage. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna rumble alt right on top of me. But no, I do it pointing behind them, and they're in front of the alt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I oh well. Do <laughs> screw that ability up if I've left smart casting on. Yeah, and so it's usually like one screw up a game where it's like, oh 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 oh, that was <laughs> that was not what I wanted. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like now, I, I don't nice. play Rumble that often anymore. But when I do, it's like now I know better. It's like okay, just 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 change R real quick. Take but, a little uh, time here. <laughs> um, Line it up. There have been a few times where I was like, wait, what? Oh, what? what? <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sad. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> shot off Rumble's ultimate when trying to clear a wave, and I've shot it down like the river or something, and be like, uh, how did I do that? But in the reason his rise in worlds up in a, in a competitive scene where you have a pro who really knows how to play him you have all these group team fights you go in the jungles you you set up those rape bushes whatever the case may be um that's where he really shines around objectives which is pretty much what the little mini games that can turn and make or break a game for a team that's winning or losing 
So, and you hear the cash say it all the time. Don't go in the jungle when there's a rumble on the enemy team. You know, they did that, and that's why they lost that fight, and so on and so on. I really love this. So. Just, just as a side, I love the sound that Rumble's ultimate makes when it lands. Because it's... <laughs> dunk, dunk, yeah. Dunk, 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 dunk. yeah that's, and, and you know you're going to die. When one I'm of the cheese salsa. It's, it's either going to it's either gonna work real well for the most part, or you whiffed it and you're beat. Right. Uh, I do want to point out Zillion here as well, and we have Janna. Uh, Zillion, I did say as soon as Faker played him the one time, and I saw it, you know, kind of jumped in that bandwagon. But I made a tweet. I was like, "We're going to see a lot more Zillion being played at Worlds." And <laughs> then NA tried to bust him out and never did well with Zillion at all. And I started losing my faith in how well Zillion plays. But you have to have a team that is ready to play with that support mid later, and is ready to back up around him. The most unappreciated part in solo queue is the bonus experience that you're getting. I think that's mm -hmm. really the big reason he keeps seeing play at the competitive level. Yeah. Because if you can get your team to a mid-game power spike before your opponent gets there, just by being on the map, you have given yourself a huge advantage. I mean, it, it, like if nothing else, that can that can swing the level one fight. If your bot lane gets to level two first, just because you were in mid lane, that's a huge, huge advantage you just gave them. I could be wrong, but isn't he the only champion left with a global passive? You are correct. Um, they've slowly been removing them over the past year. They took away Janna. They took away TF. They've just been slowly eradicating that from oh. uh, the game itself. And to they hate invisible power. They've said this mm -hmm. a million times, and that is exactly what Zillion's passive is. They will get rid of it during the off season if they don't. Oh, absolutely. Well, especially with all the uh, he's you know a rise to prominence that he has now, you can definitely see why something like that should probably be removed. Yeah, but then you see games like Royal Club versus OMG, where Royal Club got Zillion, and it was just terrible. <laughs> you know, Chrono shifting the wrong targets, etc. So you gotta. Play him properly for your yeah. comp. I want to say, take advantage of that. I will early say game a lot of that. If the discussion, if you guys are looking for that, go check out the LCS rundown from yesterday because I think we did a really yeah. good job. Get more detail on that. Royal Club and OMG and how they played and everything. So there's a lot of discussion to be had. Like I said, that podcast should be out by the time you hear this one. Uh, Jana is coming back into prominence. We have seen a lot of the Koreans. Well, I won't say a lot, but a few of the teams. I can't off the top of my head. I can't think about it. But they were doing fast. Uh, tower rush with Janna by popping the shield and getting that extra AD and then they would build a Lucian with a straight bloodthirster even on the rework and he could just mow down towers and that's all their strategy was and that's why it's she another... that's another reason she doesn't work in solo queue oh, yeah, she's, it's another she's way popular in solo queue now she's right now for worlds the LC or worlds right now Thresh and Jaina are the support king and queen you know those are the one you pick one of those two and that's and Crapo even said it on the analyst desk. He's like, "Well, if one of them's banned, the other one's picked. That team's gonna win." <laughs> she's Period. working in solo queue right now right. for a different reason than she's working in worlds. In Can solo engage. queue, it's all about the I mean, right now. Assassins are coming back. Jan has always been the best yeah. champion to go against assassins. We're in a really hyper carrying meta, so she really supports that and lets the. Um, that AD farm safely in lane. She gets them the extra shield so that they can trade back and actually get it through lane. Um, and then, you know, it just, it helps her, them for a different reason as opposed to in worlds where they're using it for the AD and to get an early game advantage. And she's in solo queue, it's more about that late game advantage with her. It's, it's definitely a case where you just, like, if you run into Janna, I mean, Thresh is a perfectly fine pick. Mm -hmm. um, Janna works, one of the other reasons Janna works so well is she deals with uh, heavy ganking junglers really easily. Just having that knock up on demand, like, really can stop a gank from happening, happening period. Knock with Ramus so being, yeah, with Ramus being as um, successful and popular as he is right now, Janna is a great pick against him. I think that pretty much. I still think Thresh is the best. Champions. Oh, I still absolutely. think Thresh is. You can't. There's. You can't do anything pick. about Flash, Flay, Lantern, Hook. Yep. Flash, Flay, and in Lantern, the pro scene, or, or they're going to land those hooks. Yeah. <laughs> it's more yeah. of Lantern, Flash, Flay, and then you have increased your chance of landing a hook by like thirty percent. And in pros, that's you know giant because you can that predict immediate a flash. Flay, Hook 
combo is brutal. And the cooldown <laughs> on the hook. You're bringing the somebody the else so into low. it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you hit the hook, it's low. Yeah, if you hit the hook, yeah. it's, it's really long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which these pros are hitting the hooks. They're sure, they the are. Hooks. <laughs> Solo queue players are, are not always hitting the hook. Right. I think the most important Art thing to remember some, some when you start looking at champions and worlds is that ch- the pros are picking them for a reason, and they are strong champions, but it's because they're they're using and abusing whatever ability it is, and usually it's some sort of team-related advantage strategy, that yeah. you get. And yeah, there's strategy related around the team. So um, I know we go, oh, perfect, you're going to see terrible. crazy stuff in solo queue because of worlds, and you will. Um, but the champion isn't bad, and it's not like the, you know, pros are just going. I'm gonna play some random crap today. Let's see if I can win worlds. There, <laughs> there's a they have a strategy behind it. So before you go try to throw that into solo queue, make sure you understand the strategy behind it. So if you want to play Rumble, then play Rumble, but communicate with your team. Hey, let's fight in the jungle. Let's try to get dragon. We have total objective control, and try to like work around. And use the same ability, you know, use the same advantages that the pros are, but don't just pick a pro, uh, pick a champion because the pros are using them. Just make sure you have a reasoning behind it. I say that all the time, and that's that applies because they have a strategy. They have a reason they're picking these champions. Why'd you pick the cow in patch four point one eight? Well, because Darian played him on the stream the other day. Well, <laughs> you're not Darian. Board. Do you know how to play Alistar? Are you <laughs> Darian? Is what I would ask first and foremost. <laughs> But, um, okay, a- anything else that we add to this discussion? No, we touched all those champs. Mm-hmm. We got there. We got there. We that, did. We finished episode <laughs> number two. Well done. Sorry about the long Scion rant. Test. You're good, man. I just wanted to discuss every one of his He was trying to abilities. make his rant as long as the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot longer what than that. What happened to you? Why are you doing I this I did not now? hit terrain. Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, I bought a roll tonight. It's it great. was me last week. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. And he has to carry the torch. I'm proud of him. Somebody knew it. Dom, time. it's your I'm turn so next week. When I do it, it's so on accident. I, I like to assume that when Sean does it, it's on accident. But Adam, I know you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even try to do the ones last yeah. week. They straight up happened. I, yeah, like, I don't know like, what's wrong. If it happens, that. it happens. That's no big deal. Um, but Adam, I know you're doing it on purpose. Nope. And it's all you just, know that. It's, 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 I'm slacking, so he's picking up the slack. That's all it is. <laughs> somebody's got to take care of it. Declaw's just too busy with Syndra. Just, I am just, very busy with her. Just can't. I, I see him never tweet. He's like, I have a new tweet schedule. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. I do. But <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah. that too. <laughs> I always tweet during the work hours. That's when I'm on my computer staring at a screen all day. But all right. Now it's on the weekend, so. All right, that's it. That's it. Anyway, for episode number play Scion. 202. Go play Scion. Declaw approved. Go, uh, go ch- <laughs> don't go play all those world's champions unless you really understand how to play them and why you're playing them. Other than that, guys, uh, Elevator Brewing Company, Columbus, Ohio, 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Saturday. We'll see you all there. That was episode number 202, again, of the Trinity Force podcast. We will see you all for 203 on Wednesday. Peace.